Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Episode 24 of the Terrible Book Club. This time, we read Melanie's Marvelous Measles by Stephanie Messenger. I'm Paris, and this is Chris. Hi, Paris. This one's a real short one. We uh, we read it in the like 20 minute run up to setting up for this episode. Yeah, I, I read it. I read it in nine minutes, and that's with like making fun of the pictures and the content and talking to Chris in between. Yeah, you stopwatched yourself, in fact. I did, 9 minutes, one. 18 seconds. Oh, blazing fast reading <laughs> yeah. time, I see. So it's a children's book. Uh, it's like 40 pages or something. 20 pages are some wonderful text, and 20 pages are some not-so-wonderful <laughs> illustrations. I mean, the text isn't wonderful yeah, either. Yeah, well, let's, I mean, let's talk about the illustrations first. Because yeah, so- I feel, you know, being a children's book with... <laughs> "Quote unquote illustrations." I'm making air quotes. I was gonna say, can we talk about? Can we just talk about the word illustration? Yeah, and what that's supposed to mean. So, I mean, I'm not an artist, and neither are you in the traditional like creating drawings and painting sense. But to me, an illustration is something you draw by hand, a 2D image that you draw by hand using a pencil or pen. Yeah, right. She, she claims to be an illustrator. That's why we're we're taking. No, no, no it's not she. Some guy. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, Johann Vanderhoff. Okay, well, yeah, he claims he, to be the illustrator he, here. He's credited as an illustrator. Um, but in fact, when you start l- looking and getting uh, getting sucked into these terrifying quote illustrations unquote, you realize that they're actually just photographs with a cartoon filter over them. And or weird, um, shitty computer line drawings. Like, like I can't really explain this. The faces especially look oh, like so they, they, they were just, like, cropped out of some other photo or something. This this looks like, the, the illustrations look like, I don't know if you've ever seen those websites that have, like, how to, like, you Google something, like, how to do this thing. And, like, yeah. the, a, a website will pop up with, like, the steps in. And it's not, like, actual pictures. It's just, like, these weird illustrations. It seems to be, like, in this that vague genre here for me where, like, I'm half expecting it to turn into one of the kids just, like, how to make a pasta or something. or So, yeah, I mean. How it, to s- save a choking baby. <laughs> and it's weird because it, so it looks like a lot of them are photographs with, a cartoon filter put on them and some like mild editing like the um there's like thick black borders around everything and um but the th- like there's like proportions that are just out of whack so maybe it's not i don't know maybe it's not all photographs it's like a combination of photographs and weird cartoon line drawings and it's just there's some real big fruit in here it's, I don't know if, yeah it's i don't know so, if you're pro big fruit but I, there's, there's a lot of big old fruits in here yeah there's a lot of like oh man and there's like ex- like there's this one image of a little girl thinking about her friend who is sick and the little girl's lower face is like too big for her hair <laughs> so yeah very that's specific weird. criticism but if you bother um, to look through this book you'll see what paris I, means like. um and then okay there's another image of um it's supposed to be like a mom getting an apple and a glass of water ready for her daughter as like an afternoon snack when she comes home from school um but all you can see is like um a basket of apples, the mom's hand holding a single apple and her other hand holding a glass of water. And then out the window, you see the daughter running in. And the mom's hand, glass, apple, like countertop, it's all clearly a photograph with just enhanced thick black line borders. But then the child running towards the home 
looks like some kind of it, some kind of horrifying haunted <laughs> doll. Like I don't really know. You, you just googled creepy girl doll and yeah. like put it in the window over there. It's very strange. It's the measles doll coming for you, Melanie. Yeah, I think the only thing that's really an illustration is actually the measles monster character. He's yeah, the only that's thing the, that there's, looks. There's like, there's a little girl thinking about measles catching her, like physically catching her. Yeah, and in her head she has this like I, it looks kind of like Grimer from. Pokemon. It's a very vague reference if you have no Pokemon yeah, I have no idea knowledge, what that means. whatever. But that, it basically, it's what that looks like, basically. Yeah, there's also some weird fruit sizes, like Chris was saying. You know, big girls, fruits. real big fruits, just huge carrots. Like I, <laughs> these carrots, enormous are just carrots, too big. Um, Those GMOs are getting crazy. That's the, the yeah, side yeah. story after this. Let no, they you. would never. This lady would never let her child near GMO influenced <laughs> produce. But that's pretty big fruits. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, all right, so if you haven't figured it out by now or if you haven't heard of this book, this book is a um, a book written by a woman who is against vaccinations for everyone, but most especially for children. Yes. Um, so this is an anti-vaxxing children's book. Uh, probably one of the most horrific things I've ever said. I, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, not... I, I, I really try. I was like, all right. And, and you know, I... As much as I don't agree with this person, I understand. I now understand why this person has such a warped sense of reality. And At science. the very start of it, right after like the title and copyright page, oh, I'll just there, read it. there's a dedication. So, dedication. This book is dedicated to Jason, my firstborn son. In his short life, he taught me to be a more responsible parent, and with his death from vaccinations came my life purpose. Yikes. Yeah. That's how a children's so, book starts, everybody. Yeah. The, scare the kids right away. <laughs> but, I mean, a horrible thing to happen to someone. We're, we're absolutely. absolutely not yeah. going to, like... I'm not advocating baby death here. Yeah, I'm, I'm or like, we're, we're not making fun of someone no. for losing a child or something like that. But it's in those moments where you might develop some strong ideas about things, let's say. Some very strong and correct ideas because you're so overcome with the need for a reason why your child died at the age of you know two and it's I terrible mean, sometimes it, it's really a terrible thing to happen but sometimes things just it, like it's chaos of the world that we all live in it's very hard to face and not- yeah and i think that people would rather you know instead of accepting that like in this case doctors thought that her child had a very rare disease called alexander's disease and um it's a genetic condition that causes ca- almost causes a child to sort of like atrophy altogether it causes like developmental problems um head enlargement but um torso and lower body um not small mint but um and small <laughs> yeah some real quality sorry that, i shouldn't have oh that was a bad time to, that was a bad time to have a fucking some medical term uh, it's small mint. No. oh no i well, oh, honey man. i'm sorry but I, my penis has been in small mint <laughs> it's small like Oh man, I didn't want to laugh yeah. at this part. Like we're I not really, like, the, the different uh, jokes. That's not what we're joking about. No, I mean, I really, I really, I can understand like why someone in that emotional state where you have a child suddenly getting ill and dying. You know, I can understand why someone in that state thinks, "Oh, well, they got vaccinated six months before, a year before, two weeks before they started having symptoms, so that must be it." And they they'd rather believe that because. There's a lot of information out there now about, you know, there's a lot of, not information about, but there's, there are a lot of people in the world who are kind of into this anti-vaccine uh, idea. And um, yeah, so if you're not familiar with it, the basics are just that these people believe that, and this isn't true, but they believe that vaccines are advocated as 100% effective, which of course isn't true. But so they believe that and they think that because scientists and doctors say that vaccines are 100% effective because they fail at all means they are not effective at all. So it's a very weird logic puzzle. Um, and like the, the si- doctors and scientists and epidemiologists, I guess that's the word I believe for that, uh, they're all lying to you for some vague reason. To make money. Profit. Yeah, which is, so It's like ba- the same thing with like the flat earth people and Na- like NASA's just out to trick you for government funds or something yeah, because like it's, I don't... because it, because it's nasa and science ads that are always trying to get my money around the holidays yeah like, no um so yeah that's <laughs> donate to nasa <laughs> yeah for... 
You don't need that Apple Watch. Uh, Give that money to the Vaccine Council, the World Health Organization. We'll we'll use it to trick people about globes. It's the globe lobby. Yeah, the globe lobby. Yeah, those manufacturers. Globe in every classroom, Paris. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, it it comes from a horrible tragedy happening to them, but they start to... I guess it's because they also think because there's a whole angle with vaccine vaccines causing autism or perhaps the diseases in the vaccine actually not being inert at all and people developing the diseases that were in there. There's kind of a whole right. rainbow of exactly how vaccines are harmful. And, like yeah, and like unfortunately that whole that whole thing led you know linking vaccines to autism was proven to be false quite a while ago. I mean the person who uh, put out that article was found to basically have just kind of made it up or or at least um altered the results of something to make it appear a certain way actually i think for money and recognition and it was it was found out that it was it's totally not true and they've i mean many studies have been done you know since then proving the effectiveness of vaccines the fact that we're all not fucking dying of rubella and measles and shit right now is is proof that it's, yeah it's <laughs> really right. easy to take that stuff for granted when you haven't been exposed yeah. to stuff like what vaccines protect against and so, it's and a the, lot of these horrible things that, yeah and the, the interesting thing about these anti-vax people is they think that so i'm saying okay you know the reason that we're all not dying of these diseases right now and that the incidence of death from these diseases is pretty low is because we're vaccinated and and, you know, most people would say, and you can see that that's true because in developing countries and places that are, you know, not as wealthy, so let's say, as America. Not you as see, much medical infrastructure. Right. You see all these people dying. But the anti-vaxxers, they have, they have something up their sleeve. They say, no, the answer is sanitation and good food. Yep. Just not and veggies. Not vaccine. So, so, and it's, it's, it's honestly kind of clever. I don't think it was intentionally clever, but it's clever because... It's not something, like, if you hear that, it's not something you can easily parse out because it's not something that you can, um, I can't remember the statistical word I'm thinking of, but it's, um, it's a a factor that you can't rule, like, you can't separate out, I guess I'm trying to say. Sorry, I can't remember the correct terminology, but, you know, you could hear that and go, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, but in both circumstances, you know, health, health infrastructure is better, but also sanitation is better and food is better. Like, there's never really a perfect storm of, like... You can't... The control grouping yeah. for that is really hard to do. Right, and so... Be, like, let, let's get into so, more So of they like, easily convince people that these things are true, especially if they're grieving the loss of a young child. I yeah. mean, and, and most of these childhood diseases are so deadly um, because they, they target kids who are under five years old. I mean, and, and this book... Um, this book, I say that loosely, just like the illustration yeah. word was used loosely. Yes. Um, this book is specifically about measles, and I I really think that the author is confused. I think that she thinks measles are chicken pox. Because yeah, there's, there's, it's weird they're because conflated, she, kind of. Yeah, it's weird because she talks about them as two separate things, yeah. but the way she describes them is clearly... She describes measles, and that description is chicken pox. So I don't really understand. Yeah, basically, in in this story, we'll, I guess now we get to get into the meat of, of the very sli- small slice of meat. I don't think there's meat. I don't think there's meat. The, there was a deli slice yeah, of a, story in here. Yeah, one a little, thin turkey a sample, slice. Yeah. Anyway, so the, the, w- there's a student at school who... It, the main character, I guess, is Tina, and Melanie is her friend who didn't show up to school, and she's worried about Melanie, and then she hears that, oh, Melanie had measles, so... That's why she's home. Yeah. Her, it's funny, in the classroom, there's a, a, a couple of kids off to the side, there's two boys, Jared and... Uh, Sam? I think it might have been... Yeah, Jared Travis, and some other Travis, kid. Travis, Tra- Travis. Travis, Travis and Jared, and <laughs> <laughs> the, the reasoning that happens here is one of them got vaccinated, the other one didn't. Mm-hmm. And Jared, Jared is the one that got vaccinated and turns to Travis and says, well, if you don't get your vaccines, then you're going to die. And then Travis's <laughs> reasoning, his counter-reasoning is, well, I haven't died yet, so... <laughs> So not that's vaccinated. It. Works. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah, like it's these it's these like shitty shitty cobbled together pieces of kind of logic. It's believable that make... as a child reasoning that well, way. But... As a child, but these are fucking adults peddling this shit. Travis like... is definitely supposed to come across as like the one that got one over on Jared because spoiler Jared gets measles later in this book as like punishment. <laughs> yeah. For and, being and such reason... an idiot and telling people to get vaccinated. And the reason that the reason that everyone the reason that he gets measles is because he eats 
horrible things. <laughs> like he eats, ch- he eats chips and drinks soda. No, you know, he- <laughs> measles carrying <laughs> vectors. That's how you get the measles. Yeah. Um, in he, in no, every ba- eats- every hundredth bag of Doritos, it's just filled with measles. So he eats. Um, so these are the these are the things in the image next to his bedside. Golden crisps, MSG enriched, GM full. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, Alfred's munchy, a giant hamburger, cheese ish. Cheese ish. <laughs> Uh, chip, really, soda, and cupcakes. I really like cheese ish. Yeah, like, the, yeah, they're like they look like onion rings, but they're cheese ish. I don't know. Cheese ish. Um, you know. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I wish I was this kid because he's got a bunch of snacks next to his bed that I never would have had as a kid. So that's yeah, he's pretty impressive. Also, he's like sick in bed with measles, and his mom is just like, just have the cheese ish. I, I am not. I'm too lazy. And again, you know, the, so like I said, throughout this book, um, she describes so the author describes measles as. Oh, um, little pink spots on your tummy and you get kind of hot because you have a fever. I just feel a little and, hot, that's all. And they don't itch is, or hurt at all. And, and that's the description of chicken pox. So, yeah. like, I mean, and chicken pox can, is usually itchy, but whatever. Um, measles is so much worse. Yeah. And it, incredibly deadly. And that's I know why that, there's a whole different word besides chicken pox. Like, it's a yeah. Diff- and I know that we don't think of measles as deadly because we've kind of, because the measles vaccine came out. Um, it was an, it was you know first found to be effective in 1963, and then it you know widespread vaccination started shortly thereafter. So you know for the past 50 years we've lived in a world with you know without worrying about measles deaths. I mean they still happen. There was about what 80 80 or 90 thousand in 2016 according to the World Health Organization. So um, before that it used to have like 2.6 million deaths a year. Yeah. Or something like 2.6 million globally. Yeah. And now it's down to like 80,000 globally. So pretty significant reduction. Um, I mean, obviously it takes time and it's difficult to eradicate. I mean, it's it's impossible almost to eradicate diseases. I mean, even even the bubonic plague still exists and, and rears up sometimes. But I think smallpox um, is mostly gone except for a couple of samples somewhere in a lab. Yeah. And so and so this is again, this is the issue. So like. I mean, I'm not an expert. I don't know a lot about vaccines. I just understand a ba- at base level how they work. And um, they, so they're not marketed as 100% effective. Like, no one ever tells you getting this vaccine means you're never going to get that disease. That's not how it works. Yeah, and also, that's a nice touching off point for kind of my whole point, or like, not my, not my point, but like the thing that gets me not only about the anti-vax movement, but a lot of other things in, in society today is the denigration of experts and how... Th- mm-hmm. You, you can't really trust them. And of course, there's people like the doctor that sold a fake study like that, that you shouldn't trust. And But that doesn't invalidate all science and all epidemiology and all vaccine research. Or yeah. And like so that. And you have to trust an educated opinion somewhere or most usefully multiple educated. opinions. Yeah. I mean, that's why there's peer review. And I mean, but unfortunately, people like this, um, they again, like you said, like the flat earthers, any sort of conspiracy theorist. They ride on that carpet, you know, that magical carpet of scientists are all lying. They're all being paid. Um, they're all, you know, they're all just, I don't know, Trying part of the Ill- Illuminati. On you. Like, yeah. And so it's this. And, and look, like, neither of us are saying to just swallow any information that comes your way from a quote verifiable source, but there's more nuance to it than either of those options. Like, but if most of the sources are saying one way and they're not like, totally affiliated with each other right you can reasonably assume that if there's very a lot if there's many educated sources telling you this and it's probably true and again science change like all, another thing people miss is that science changes opinions a lot of time because we're finding out new stuff because they're always working to improve things like vaccines i mean think about this 1963 measles vaccine came out before then i mean and and well, we should talk about this briefly. The title of this book, Melanie's Marvelous Measles, mirrors the title. I, I guess there's probably a more eloquent way to say this, but it apes the title of Roald Dahl's book. Um, what, what was it called? It's in it's in that document I have. But Roald Dahl, um, you know, the guy who wrote like Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory and a bunch of other children's books that people know. His daughter, Olivia, died from measles in a pretty horrific way. She suffocated to death. Uh, after getting it because it causes some pretty awful side effects um so it, oh it's called george's marvelous medicine oh, which yeah. is actually about the um the triumph of a measles vaccine after his daughter olivia's death so 
many people um so this book is australian and I think maybe a lot of the outrage about this book was localized to Australia because I had never heard it. Yeah, we kind uh, of stumbled upon it. it. Yeah, so how did we find this? It was on another list of, like, these weird, terrible books or something. Oh, sometimes yeah. I'll just Google th- stuff and try to find. Um, and, and so I think that, you know, perhaps we missed out on this outrage. But apparently, when it came out in Australia, there was a lot of, lot of negative feedback because people found it offensive. That she wrote a book like this, you know, kind of arguing against a measles vaccine when Roald Dahl, the beloved children's author, wrote this very heartfelt book, George's Marvelous Medicine, about his daughter Olivia dying. And, you know, so a lot of people were really mad about that. Yeah, um, cause, I mean, like, one of the main points of the book is. It's pretty makes, irreverent to do it that. It keeps yeah. saying that, like, oh, if you get measles, your body will get stronger and more mature. Like, it uses the word mature a lot. I know it yeah. means, like, in defense, like, in terms of, like, getting yeah. stronger and not, like, literally, like, you get, you hit puberty if you get measles or something. <laughs> but. Um, it, so, like, it's this other... weird idea of it, it, not to cut you off. I'm no, sorry, no, but fine, like, I fine. just want to make the point that it's a misunderstanding almost of what vaccines are supposed to be doing to and how immunity works. I think. Well, and, and that's that was what I was getting to is like these people, they again, they, so they have a misunderstanding of even, you know, basic scientific knowledge, basic biology, epidemiology and what vaccines are even supposed to do. They they don't. They either don't understand it or refuse to believe it because, like you said, you know, it's it's just, oh, they're all liars. You no know, one can be trusted. Well, the the core reasoning of like, oh, your body can build up an immunity if you catch some of this disease and fight it off. That's pretty. That's a vaccine. That's, that's literally that's what, what a vaccine, vaccine is. But a vaccine is an inert version of yeah. the thing so that you don't catch it and your body just has like practice mm-hmm. viruses to work on. So, yep. it, like, why wouldn't you want the vaccine that has the inert version yeah. of the... Why would you, like, it's more risky to get, like, one that's fully ravaging your body. Yeah, it's way riskier. But I don't know why they don't think of it that way. I think, so what well, do they think is they in also, the vaccine? Like, well, they also, they, well, they think that vaccines just have nothing in them. They think they're, they have harmful, toxic chemicals in them. You know, that fun phrase that everyone Oh, no, chemicals. Says. Yeah. They Paris, did that, you know you're made entirely out of chemicals? Yeah, I know. So they're like, oh, they have formaldehyde in them and stuff, and it's like... Yes, they do, but in quantities so insignificant that, I mean, it's not even worth talking about. Yeah, people don't understand, like, parts per million and stuff like Yeah, that, they don't. I guess. And that, that's another thing that I'm saying. Like, basic science and biology, they just don't. I mean, and I'm not a scientist. You know, I'm really not. I mean, I, I consulted. But you have to go off what most of the experts are saying, right? Well, because- yeah, and I have friends who are scientists. And so, I, you know, before we read this, I was like, hey this is how I feel about this thing. Is this correct? And they were like, yeah. I mean, they were like, yeah, that's vaccines are totally safe. Is there's no, I mean, obviously it does like, like anything in this world, because nothing is a hundred percent effective or ineffective because this world is not a perfect binary. Deaths do occur from vaccines. Sometimes when your body gets a vaccine and you get the inert form of a virus, it can still be enough to hurt you and get you sick and sometimes kill you. But it is very, 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 very rare that something kills you. It's more like your own immune response to things more than like the thing that was in the vaccine, you could say. so. Yeah. So in any case, um, so this woman, so she, so, okay. So you're thinking, all right, well, if she doesn't want kids to get vaccinated, she's saying kids should just get, natural vaccinations by interacting with others who are ill. Yeah. Even though, like, so again, th- these these kinds of arguments are so convincing because they mix truth and fiction. So, like you're saying, basically what she's explaining is is kind of how a vaccine works, but it's the more extreme version that's way more dangerous for children. Yes, yeah, super and risky. Um, and secondly, she advocates getting plenty of fresh air, water, sunshine, yeah, and, sunshine and fix you fruits right and up. vegetables. And, you know, these are, I mean, this lady is of the particular flavor of, of anti-vaxxer who believes that, like, GMOs are evil and only organic produce should be eaten. And um, and the interesting thing is that she recommends, you know, when they go visit uh, Tina's friend Melanie, she says, oh, we should bring her some carrot juice because vitamin A helps fight against measles. And that actually is true. Yes. So there's, like, a nugget of truth there. So when you get measles, um, you know, if you actually come down with it, if you're one of the rare cases, one of the 80,000 children globally, or maybe more than that, I guess, because 80,000 die. So I don't know. If you're one of the million or two kids that get it every year, um, what happens is they give you, uh, you know, doctors will give you 
two high doses of vitamin A 24 hours apart. And apparently kids that get those doses are 50% more likely to survive. So like, yeah, that is true. Vitamin A is very helpful because measles attacks your respiratory system and your eyes and ears. So um, if you get measles, it can start as a, a fever and a neck and face rash and then grow to um, encephalitis, which is brain swelling, blindness, um, pneumonia, eye and ear infections. It's a, it's a very serious and crushing deadly disease. So um, anyway, vitamin A helps with that because it can help prevent blindness in a lot of the people and help them survive. So, you know, it's this and, and obviously, you know, getting good exercise, getting fresh that, air, eating fruits and vegetables. It's like, definitely good for those you. Those are good. And yeah, that's like... Gonna that's going to help like, you fight disease and be healthier, but that's yeah. not all you, yeah. should, you can be doing. But that information is taken to the extreme and and they, they just believe that, you know, that's, There's a lot of, that's, that's what you it's do. It's like the same kind of person that like believes that, oh, all this modern stuff isn't necessary if I just live like a human lived 10,000 years ago. That's the natural state and it's the most healthiest, which is really see, weird. See, this is, this is, this is the paleo doctors, you see. That's what this is, the paleo doctors. Yeah, that, it's, it's, it may be sure your body might be still used to processing a certain kind of thing, but if there's been studies and, and reasonable amounts of experts agreeing on something, that's really all you can do unless you're willing to go into that field and study it for yourself. Right. At and some it, point, you have to take the word of people that have been doing it for years, I, I know. right? It's, like, like, it's so, like, why do we have people choose different careers? Like, if we're not going to believe the people in those careers, it's madness. What's the point of, like, us studying anything at all if you think it's all going to be made up? It, it, yeah. Unless, like, it's your own personal study of, well, this one time. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, like you said, well, this one time, it's a lot of anecdotal shit. And and most of these people, like I said, are parents who have lost children very young, either immediately after a vaccine or at some point after getting a vaccine. So, they, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, people grieving children looking for answers. And so they're impossible to argue with. They're crazy. Is, is it just because maybe, like, you trust your Uncle Bob or your cousin Jim a lot more than a doctor that you don't know or something? And yes, like, that is I, that I, is actually part of it. So... Um, the lady that wrote this book, her well, her author name is Stephanie Messenger. Her real name is Stephanie Francis Bailey. Uh, she was a co-author on a, I'll call it a paper or an article. It was about 300 and something pages. Um, it was her, some doctor, some homeopathic doctor in Australia, and a couple of other parents um, kind of co-wrote this whole thing together. And I tried to read it because I, I know I didn't obviously I did not get nearly um, 300 pages in or anything like that. You know, I read the first maybe five or six pages and then I kind of scrolled through the rest and was just reading pieces here and there because I'm not going to dedicate my life to uh, fighting anti-vaxxers. But um, it was very clear that like, you know, like Chris is saying, they um, they really want to believe some quack because because the quack has different ideas that will provide the answers they want. People are always going to believe what they want to believe. They're always going to believe what they want to believe. They're also, not going to believe, you know, uh, like like Chris said, some some doctor they don't know. Also, the, I think there's an element of like, oh, I'm smarter than everyone else because I'm less gullible. That it, It's attractive to conspiracy theorists and anti-vaxxer types like this. Like, oh, I, I know the real thing that they won't tell you. Yeah, there is so a little... So I'm the smart one. There is a little bit of a, like, superiority complex thing happening It's not across the board in all cases, but I'm pretty sure for... Like, that's what a lot of this comes down to, is like, yeah, oh, you're just sheep following what people tell you to do. And, like, at a certain point, yes, I have to follow the, the expert advice of people that have been studying this thing for most of their life or something. Because that... There's no one else to trust. Yeah, like, like, like we just what? said, you know. Um, and the other thing, so I should I should say, um, both the article and this book, um, actually, and the website that that like uh, kind of hosts this group of people in Australia, they all do say. I mean, and I'm pretty sure explicitly for legal reasons, like this is not medical advice. You must consult a healthcare professional before making any decisions. The, the, uh, also, we're not telling you not to vaccinate your children. We're just giving you information and telling you you always have a choice and you just make sure you always have a choice. The and disclaimer at the end of the book is this is for information purposes only. So, like, so, Yeah, like all things? Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't know how that differs. So how is that different from... Oops. Yeah. Don't use it as real medical advice. Then what's the difference here? Yeah. What's information versus medical advice? 
Well, I mean, because medical advice prescribes you to do a specific thing for a specific reason, whereas information is just there. It doesn't give you a directive. It's, it's like this weird, like, uh, oh, I just left this here. Like, yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I did, I'm, not, I'm not the doctor. I'm just leaving. No, I'm not. I'm not bribing you, Mr. Cop. I'm just going to leave I'm this not pile of money. I'm not going to be responsible for any deaths that occur from this, but I will just leave this anti-vax pamphlet here for you to read. If you happen to follow it, I yeah. can't. I mean, it's like, you know... <laughs> it's like someone leaving a gun in the middle <laughs> of, like, a fucking suicidal person's, like, me. Yeah. Like, I'm just gonna leave it here. If you guys do anything with it, I mean, you know, it's not my fault. I just, I just, I had, this is where I leave my gun. This is where my gun lives. So You're in my gun's house. <laughs> yeah. it's, you're actually breaking and entering. I'm gonna assume you. It's a really you. bad idea to have this meeting at the NRA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, it is interesting that, you know, for legal reasons, of course, they can't just... They're, they're hedging their bets at all times. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, because otherwise it would... They would get a lot more flack and they would have a lot more difficulty getting the information out there if they just outright said, don't vaccinate your kids, vaccines are evil. They would get a lot less support. Um, sure, but this is also... It's a children's book, right? So it's is it yeah. is it for the parent to tell their kid or is it for the kid to pick up and, like, inform their parents that they don't want to get vaccinated because... I mean, no fucking child is gonna pick this up it's a kindle book also yeah like, <laughs> well i mean kids are pretty technically eh, savvy but the the cover is that same horrifying art style yeah. so they probably would like get creeped out by it also <laughs> why are the measles marvelous i don't um know. well it's because of the roll doll book because it's trying to be i know a... but like don't call a disease marvelous <laughs> Well, because to them, it's it's not a thing to be afraid of. Just embrace the disease. Embrace the disease, yeah. Chris. Uh, uh, one little point, one little question I had that, that just kind of nagged at me through you know, this entire story arc, this, this mm -hmm. gripping story arc. Why are the kids so worried about how pregnant Miss Spencer is all the time? They're always bringing up because, all of her. She's about to go. She's about to. Because, Chris, traditional home life, family values. Is that it? Really? Yeah. It's just like that. For some reason, all the kids are t like their teacher that comes into class is pregnant, and they're like, "Oh, she's got she's real pregnant right now." And later on, like t Tina tells her friend Melanie, "Like, oh, she's so pregnant, man." Yeah, and the girls also play with their dolls as if they're their babies. It's a very, it's a very like toe the fucking line. But there's girls no reason for like the, have babies. It's be not like pregnant. it comes back around like Miss Spencer has her kid and decides not to vaccinate because of what happened. It's just oh she's pregnant. You, you know she's pregnant by the way. I mean Neat, maybe right? maybe this was supposed to be um, the start of a sequel. Like maybe this was supposed to be a series. <laughs> maybe next it's gonna be like Patricia's p pathetic pregnancy. <laughs> oh no! Uh, it has to be a good adjective. Uh, Patricia's. Uh, wait, what about that Amazon pretty... review? Oh yeah, let's. So, this is how we'll wrap this up. This some, is a very short episode, y'all. Some wonderful person um, reviewed this book on Amazon and created a list. Well, he I, apparently he or she and a bunch of other people um, they a group a group of undetermined, it's an exhaustive list indeterminate group of humans created a list of uh, titles mimicking the title of the book. So it's pretty great. Um, yeah. Abby's absolutely abundant abscesses. <laughs> oh, wow, they're just everywhere. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to get. Yeah, to keep reading. We're just gonna go through them. Andy's amazing AIDS. Oh. Oh no. Um, hang on. <coughs> Sorry, that was my uh, my measles. Um. Bertha's Bell blossoming bulimia. Oh no. Bob's bodacious bone break. Bobby's bitch in bubonic plague. <laughs> Let me, like, who, who wrote this? Hold on. It's uh, uh, Mitchell J. It's Michael. Oh, wait, so, yeah. Gogolski? Michael J. Gogolski. Yeah. Uh, he, he says at the end, though, that a bunch of people helped him. Um, let's, let's pick another one. Cole Herbs Heaven... Oh, Cole Herbs Heavenly Herpes. <laughs> Cyril's Crunchy Celiac uh, is a very... It's, a, it's an image rated with Dan's words. Dan's Dandy Dandy Walker Malformation with Mental Retardation, <laughs> Macrocephaly, Myopia, and... Brachytelephalange. That's oh, a wow. medical word. Brachytelephalange. Sure. Uh, yeah. Dolly's desirable death is uh, just right. <laughs> Doug's delightful dys dysentery. Yep. Um. Edward's excellent eczema. Flo's favorite flu. Fred's fabulous fracture. <laughs> Uh, Iris's irresistible itch. Oh, Isabel's interesting infraction. infarction. That's when your heart. Yeah, yeah. Is. I know. I just I'm reading it from a distance with my glasses. So, 
Lucy's luscious lupus. Say that Ugh. five times quick. Margie's <laughs> memorable mononucleosis. Ooh. It was very memorable. Believe me, how she got it, she remembered that forever. Ugh. Mike's magnificent mumps. Just look at his mumps. Yeah. They're magnificent. I mean, we are we are just kind of picking some. There's a huge list. It's extremely exhaustive. What's the rubella one? <laughs> Paul's pumping priapism oh. is vile. <laughs> That's oh. a vile title. Yeah, I don't. Oh. I don't. Oh, I can't think about that. That's awful. Peter's perfect polio. Oh, uh, Ru- Ruth's radical rubella. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's a really good one. Uh, yeah, so go on the Amazon uh, re- page for this, and you'll see a quite extensive list. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, you know sarcastic reviews that are like five stars. This book is great for killing your children or something, you know, because it's ridiculous. I mean, the the only last the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, why is it that I don't know? Maybe we already answered this question. I, I may have already answered my own question, but when I was reading this and researching about it a little bit, I just kept thinking. Why do these people only care about themselves and their offspring and no one else? Like, there's... It's weird because they say that they care about everyone else and want everyone else's children to be safe, but the reality is that spreading disease kills those other people and kills your children, too. So, like... In their uh, mind, they're helping stop the spread of disease, which is just in the vaccine. By spreading it. I... Ugh! These people are awful. Um... So yeah, Stephanie Messenger, Francis Bailey, uh, you're the worst. I'm... Also, that illustrator is probably yeah, the worst of the wait, bunch, wait, actually. Can we, you know what? Do a quick Google search for Johan Vanderhoff. I want to see what other wonderful artistic how, how do we spell endeavors. that? Johan. Johan, J-O-H-A-N. Yes. And then separate word, capital V-A-N. Yes. Separate word, lowercase D-E-R. Uh-huh. Uh, separate word, capital H-O-E-F-F. All right, let's see what this else this guy has done. Yeah, and by the way, you definitely need to look at these uh, images. I'm no longer going to call them illustrations because it's not what they are. There's a lot of Facebooks um, here. Oh, it's Illustrator. It's real terrible. Um, oh, that's a Goodreads page. Oh. What if I just pull up Google Images? Yeah, he maybe nope, he only that, ever This is a did... very common name, I believe. Yeah, maybe he only ever um, made something for this. It and then looks like he... Gave up. You know, isn't exactly a wonderful illustrator. Uh, yeah, there's nothing here besides that that one mention. Sarah visits a naturopath. Wait, that's one of her other books. Where? Right down down. Yeah. So a naturopath 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 is is like so they made another they made several of these books. So this one's about measles, but there's one about Sarah visiting a naturopath. A naturopath? I don't know. A naturopath? I, I mean I understand it's supposed to be a combination of looks like, like he's just her like illustrator for her specific because he on oh. this page he's only coming up for whatever this thing is a weird database oh world cat yeah, it's not weird all right well Here so that's really all there is to say about this book <sighs> maybe take a peek at the uh illustration look at the, look at the images it's really kind of very unsettling I, um, I wish we could describe it better this is kind of a short episode almost a psa like episode at the end of the year be like hey everybody make sure you get vaccinated so you don't get sick yeah the new year or something um, oh yeah and on our way out oh well to remind you that we started a Patreon, so if you want to throw us a dollar or more a month, sweet. We are actually right now, after this episode, producing some exclusive content. Ooh, so premium uh, quality. So yeah, if you want to throw us like I forget how much, it's like two or three or four dollars, five dollars or something. Um, you can listen to us now. Us uh, talk over the full length Maradonia movie. Yes, we have acquired. A copy of it to commentate over. I might actually put like a video to it, the video yeah, to our commentary, yeah. maybe. But at the very least, there'll be an audio track, and I'll probably link to where I, you know, I found the video for everyone else to sync up the commentary track with. Because uh, from the brief glimpse that I took at it, it's going to be a journey that we take together. <laughs> oh yeah, um, and and again, you know, Terrible Club is always going to be free to listen to, but. Uh, we're hoping that if we get some money through the Patreon, it'll help us produce more episodes. Um, but, you know, if you even just want to, you know, pay us three or four or five dollars to watch 
<laughs> the Maradonia thing and then cancel your Patreon after a month. That's totally yeah, cool. Yeah, probably we worth it. Happy with that. Definitely um, going to be worth it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do that and uh, a couple of other little things that we might put out for free. Uh, but for yeah. now, this is... Uh, it's a short episode. This Everyone have a happy holiday. We'll yeah, see you happy, in the new happy year. winter holiday stuff. Whatever your preferred activity is for, you know, end of the year Thanksgivings and celebrations. Yeah. Enjoy yourselves. Get vaccinated, please. And hey, if you get any bad books, send them to us. We'll read them next year. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Till next year, Paris. Till next year.